is there a political rift between Raila and Prengo? Has been claimed by politicians, the press, and also ordinary citizens. Perhaps we need to look at this issue and see whether exactly the rift is factual or it is perceived. There are currently five important political players in Nyanza whom their background is significant even as we discuss whether or not there's a political rift between the two gentlemen. Of course, Raila himself is an important political player having presided over the handship and also having stood for elections in 2017 and lost. Of course, with questions as to whether his loss was legitimate. And again, was sworn in and later on had a handshake with the president. From there on, we have to have had a long journey around the review of the reform of the current constitution in what today we are discussing is the BBI. Uh, then, of course, there is James Orengo. Orengo, as we know, played a major role in the second liberation and one of the founders of the original Ford and therefore is considered as one of the uh, second liberation of heroes. He's a leading constitutional lawyer in the country and a senior counsel for that matter. He has had uh, in parliament throughout the presidency of three presidents, starting with Moy in the 80s, again partly Moy, again Moy in the 90s, uh, Kibaki, and uh, now Kenyatta. Then, of course, there is Mbadi, who currently uh, serves as the chairman of Podium and also minority leader. Then there is Junet Mohammed, uh, who was present during the handshake and is also the joint head of the, sec uh, the secretariat of the BBI, uh, together with Dennis Oweri. Junet is also the director of elections in podium. Uh, one other important political player that uh, I need to mention is Utienda Molo. Uh, Amolo, as we know, was a member of the Committee of Experts whose work was very instrumental in the delivery of the 2010 Constitution. He later on served as the Chairman of the Committee of Administration of Justice. He led the team of lawyers that petitioned the re-election of Uhuru Kenyatta in 2017 and successfully won the case. He is a, he's a senior counsel and also the MP for a regular constituency. Understanding the background and the history of these gentlemen as far as political struggle and constitutional reform is concerned is important and that's why it was important to start with them. Of course, the current perceived or actual political differences between Rail Odinga and Orengo emanate from the handshake as well as the ongoing debates around BBI. It should be recalled that Orengo was not present when uh, President Kenyatta and Rail Odinga shook hands on 18th March 2018. In fact, people were wondering whether <coughs> it was deliberate that was left out or whether he knew anything about what was going on or whether he made contributions behind the scene. And if at all, he was left out of the entire discussion. Questions have also abound as to whether Raila felt that he was not important or trustworthy to be uh, put in the picture about what was going on. This, of course, again at the backdrop of the fact that Orengo is one of the leading position lawyers in the country, one of the brains that petitioned the re-election of Uhuru Kenyatta and successfully won the case. Uh, later on, of course, we know that the, B, the, the handshake transformed into the BBI, which 
initially was seen as a body mandated to help in creating peace among different communities in the country. But later on, people were surprised or people learned that the team was also collecting data with the aim of <coughs> reforming the current constitution. As we speak today, the BBI bill is already in parliament and I think it's at this stage that murmurs about whether there is political differences between the, the two gentlemen is gaining currency. In the Senate, Orengo has held the position that Parliament is not merely a conveyor belt and therefore Parliament can play an important role in fine-tuning the BBI and making amendments that they consider necessary to those that are perceived to uh, uh, or do away with those sections that are being considered or perceived to be favoring one region at the expense of the others. And to this, he has held the, 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 the position that the BBI needs to be amended in Parliament, especially on the question of the 70 constituencies. He has stood his ground and stated that that role of allocating the constituencies is the sole mandate of the IBC. Uh, this, he has been ardently supported by the chairman of the, the legal committee in the Senate, uh, senior counsel Umogeni. On the other hand, Mbadi and Minette have stood their ground insisting that insisting that parliament has no role at all at all and in fact cannot even change a comma on a people driven initiative and therefore to them Parliament is merely a conveyor belt that uh, the document needs to pass through and then given over to Kenyans for them to make a say through the vote. I think, to me, it is the positions that are held by Orengo which appears to contradict those that are held by Binet, Muhammad and Badi that is creating the perception that probably Orengo and Raila are pulling on different directions. It should be noted here that Binet Mohammed and Badi, when they speak, people see them as speaking Raila's language. And therefore, the position they state in parliament is seen as Raila's position. And therefore, if Orengo appears to hold a contrary opinion, then this helps in fueling the perception that could be Orengo is taking a different, a different direction. Of course, Otienda Molotu has had the chance and he has spoken and indeed he also appears to favor the idea that parliament can play a role in doing so. Indeed, there was an altercation between him and Badi when the debate on BBI was ongoing when Badi appeared to interrupt him and he quickly reminded Mbadi that Mbadi has never been to any law school and therefore should listen to those who have been to law school to be educated on matters of law. Uh, given this scenario, do we, can we then say that there is a rift between the two gentlemen? The answer is yes, but also the answer is no. Why? It is yes because this gentleman appears to be taking different opinions. One favors the document to be passed by parliament as it is. Another one feels that parliament needs to make the necessary amendments and improve the document so that when it goes to the people, it goes to the people without those contentious issues. Based on this, it is possible to say that the two gentlemen are holding different political opinions. But assuming that the political opinions are different and therefore the gentlemen are pulling in different directions, what then could be the reason for this? Is this just the mere BBI and the handshake process or could there be other underlying factors? I tend to think that there are other underlying factors beyond the BBI and the handshake. And these are my reasons. As we approach, approach the 2022 elections, Orengo seemingly has declared to contest 
the, 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 the gubernatorial position in Sayre County. The same post is also appeared to be contested by Piondai. The two gentlemen are very close confident of Raila Odinga and would, at the opportune time, wish that Raila backs them for that particular position. It should be recalled that last week, or thereabout, Piawandai convened a meeting of law MPs where he reaffirmed that the Nyamba MPs are still in support of the BBI. This was meant to quell the rumors that, were going, that was going around that the MPs from the region appears to be changing their mind or to be changing tune about the same. Uh, whether this what I was doing in a way of, win, of winning favor from Raila so that he gets his backing in his quest to win the gubernatorial post in 2022 for Sierra County remains to be, uh, 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 to be seen. Otherwise, it appears that one of them will have to lose. And there are indications that uh, Orengo appears to have a head start on the ground. But the change of fortune might be there if Raila decides to back a different candidate other than Orengo. And therefore, this could also be seen as uh, one of the grounds that is, that is likely to cause the rift between the two, uh, 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 the, two, the two gentlemen. But again, as we know, Raila is also approaching the sunset of his political years and probably in a few years to come, may decide to disengage from active politics. The next question then is who will take over from Raila when he eventually retires from politics? As I have noted earlier, the most, the second most senior politician in Luanyanda today is Orengo. And by virtue of that position, he has a head start when it comes to the assumption of the leadership of Luanyanda once Raila retires. Maybe other political players from the region, the likes of Mbadi, Imet Mohammed, or Piwandai, and others, might think otherwise. And probably this could also be making them uh, try behind the scene to wrestle or to appear not to give uh, 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 um, or a head start. And in the process, uh, could be doing something behind the scene to ensure that uh, there's a rift between Raila and Orengo. Otherwise, if one were to ask me whom between Orengo and the others that I mentioned stand a better chance of leading the local community post Raila, then I would obviously go for Orengo. Orengo, as we know, has been very steadfast in the fight against governance, just much in the same way that Raila has been. He has led several street protests and he has also shown that he can actually lead and that he's not, he cannot be compromised. That, to me, is a very big score for him. But we also need to observe further that, uh, other than that, Orengo has also the capacity, just like Raila, with the time to call a meeting anywhere in Nyanza and the public will turn out. I'm sure if Orengo were to travel to Migori County and call a public gathering, the public will come out. If you were to go to Homa Bay, it would be the same. If you were to go to Kisumu, it would be the same. He would do the same for his own Sierra backyard. I'm quite sure that Orengo can also pull crowds in other areas like Nairobi. I doubt whether Jeanette Mohammed and Badi can pull similar crowd that Orengo can pull beyond their constituencies. And therefore, on account of that, in my opinion, Orengo deserves the chance to lead the local community once Raila exits active politics. In my opinion, therefore, all these walls as to whether Raila and Orengo are at loggerheads, they could be real, it could be perceived, but one important factor that we need to know that there is the issue of Sierra Gamaratoro seat. Nationally, it 
may not be an issue, but locally within Sierra County, it's a big issue. The issue of who will lead the local community after Hila exits politics is an important factor, both nationally and locally. If Raila, if rather, if Orengo were to decamp from ODM, what effect would it have for Raila in terms of his presidential ambition? I won't believe that it may not have a lot of impact in terms of Raila's presidential ambition. But whichever side Orengo joins, even if it does not bring a lot of numbers, Orengo still remains a political asset to any political position. Therefore, my bet is that Orengo needs to remain in podium and we need to build the podium together. Perhaps it is time for Raila to call an informal podium Kamukunji, listen to both sides and try to reconcile them. Otherwise, the way things are, if it escalates beyond what it is, it may have adverse effects on his 2022 presidential ambitions. Thank you.